Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm sat here today with my good friend, Cyrus Salman. Um, she is a record keeper and an amazing, amazing, amazing grid worker. We work together quite frequently on the grids. Um, and I just wanted to kind of have her on my channel, really, and just have a bit of a chit chat with you <laughs> <laughs> and just see where it goes. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you've done a nice, a nice <laughs> job of it there. I've been... I've been... I've been kicking around for a fair few years doing all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, I mean, more recently, uh, as as you mentioned, the grid work, <clears throat> the grid worker and the um, the record keeper side in particular uh, have mm. opened up in the last few years. Um, the most amazing information has been pouring through about really our hidden histories and and. Uh, the true origins of of who we who we are as a species, uh, and I've I've dived down so many rabbit holes, <laughs> mm. and I've had to kind of reconstruct my understanding of um, who we are and our history and the realities of our world totally from the ground up. It's been it's a been a massive reconfiguration, but yeah. Uh, um, you become so much more in the end understanding of all of this I'm, I'm sure you've found the same <laughs> you become so much more when you really really get in touch with who we are as humanity and what our individual mission and purpose as it were is is when we sort of arrive on this planet sort of unaware and unawake um and it's a it's a massive job it's a massive job to to bring ourselves back into consciousness at, uh, at, at this kind of level. So, you know, people like you and I are beginning to be able to share what we've learned in, you know, digging deep <laughs> out in these rabbit holes. Uh, and it's an exciting time. It's a really exciting time, isn't it, going forwards? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's so much being unfolded at the moment. And it's, um, I wouldn't, what I found with my own journey is that I've kind of found myself going more outside of the public eye and kind of going more vertically, I would say. Uh, so I'm tracing the lineage upwards into like the galactic history and then beyond. Yeah. Um, rather than kind of being pulled in and out of the different things on the Earth space, which is yeah quite strange, whereas others may may find it the other way as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, I, I started, um, I mean, I, I've known for years many many years that you know mm. what we've been taught about our history and who we are and things like this is complete rubbish because there are so many anomalies and when you look into it I mean if you've got any kind of a curious mind at all you're thinking well that's not right that's that mm. doesn't make sense that doesn't add up um and I when I really seriously started to poke around in it I started with the Anunnaki histories you know the Sumerian histories because mm. I'm a you know, I've always been a great student of myth and folklore and a great student of ancient history. Mm. Um, and and the only way you can begin to make sense of those is by going what I call going galactic. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I resisted it. I mean, for years I resisted it because that was just weird. I mean, that was just going all David Icke, you know, <laughs> mm. and look what happened to him. Who, who, who wants, who wants to be exposed to that? But mm. there came a point where I just, you know, it was every, every breadcrumb trail I followed came back to this fact you had to get off planet mm -hmm. um, and once I started once once I gave way to that uh, and really allowed myself to step into that it just opened things up like you wouldn't believe and like you say I mean um my first impulse if you'd asked me I, I would have said to you well you know it's all about what's going on on the planet and things like this but no, I was pushed and pushed so fast <laughs> into understanding multidimensionality, into understanding mm. the races, the various races, the origins yeah. of humanity, which which goes back to the beginning. You, you know, you trace the race lineages right back to the beginning of this universe. And then, to my surprise, in order to really understand the histories, um, I got taken outside this time matrix as well, I, you know, yeah. and that's when it's like, okay. <laughs> it gets really interesting then. It gets yeah. really interesting. 
And then having, you know, been ha- having been given that massive overview, mm. I mean, that is really, really, you know, high eagles viewpoint, mm. e- everything. I've, I'm now being brought back down with a bump into Earth. OK, now it's time for you to begin to explore and, and really put together the Earth histories. But you need you need this overview in order to make sense of what's unfolding here, why it's been happening where things are going um and what what people like us are here to do really because mm-hmm. we've been a part of this massive history i mean I, you know we've done various healings and things together and and mm. oh my god we've been chewed up and spat out haven't we <laughs> <laughs> to say the least yeah i mean even after the grid work session we did yesterday i felt like a little bit yeah a lot of trepidation afterwards it it took me until this morning to kind of work it all out and kind of bring it back to the zero point and I think fundamentally because yesterday we were working on the golden eagle grid and the and the the white lion grid yeah um and what I'd kind of had coming up afterwards was all of this these imprints of being hunted yeah. Um, and that followed me into my dream time last night as well. And I was Absolutely. kind of having to, did it do the same for you as well? <laughs> uh, I had, I had reptilians <clears throat> and God knows what. I mean, it really was yeah. very bizarre. And it's just, you know, just constant flashes of it. And it, yeah, and yeah. Like, Go away, the, go away. <laughs> oh absolutely the emotional yeah. trepidation I was kind of like lying there thinking oh my god I'm gonna get attacked I'm gonna get attacked and then I kept on hearing the guardians coming in saying you're not gonna get attacked you're not yeah. gonna get attacked calm yeah. yourself down um <laughs> so yeah. it was yeah all of this kind of craziness running through my body and even this morning I had to sit down and kind of like have a word with myself and process it and then I got to the point of that um deep understanding of how 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 actually safe we are yeah um as grid workers as yeah. as kind of um <clears throat> beings of source light to who are working a divine plan or working for the divine plan it's it's you are so protected it's untrue yeah. it's yeah. i mean they they can only get at you if you allow them to absolutely yeah i i, I, I came to that understanding some time ago mm. um uh, and unless there is some massive trauma that kind of opens up your light body to them because of shock Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're utterly safe Mm -hmm. oh absolutely and 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 knowing that and then being able to work from that space um puts you in a whole different place doesn't it Mm. oh it really does yeah it really really does and Uh, that that doesn't that doesn't stop all the visions and the um, oh yeah (laughs) rings and the the horrors i mean yeah there have been such horrors Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's interesting as well, because as it processes through the system, sometimes it can come up as numbness. So when it comes up as numbness, this is more of a detached response for you to kind of just allow it to pass through um, where you're not completely intertwined or engaged. If you're working as a transmuter or if you're working as like a kind of healer response, yes, you'll get the information that comes through, but it's not as impactful. And this allows the ability to kind of step out and go into an objective an objective viewpoint with the information to to disassemble it more rapidly, I would say. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And mm. being able to sort of take that observer viewpoint. I mean, that's part of the mastery of, you know, learning the art yeah. of, of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you touched base on the um the original Anunnaki um histories there I feel like we should go into that a little bit because I know I've seen your website and I was well I work with you daily if <laughs> if not um and I always come to you if I'm getting information coming in that's kind of a little bit fragmented or a bit jumbled um due to the the traumas and it's hard to kind of link together I will come to you and ask you okay this is what I'm receiving have you have you got any kind of information on that and it's been an absolute wealth of knowledge and absolute abundance of information that's drawn the dots so clearly for me to kind of put the pieces together, reassemble it and then allow it to dismantle. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So so let's go into that. I think that's, that would be a really good topic to talk about. Well, it's uh, the Anunnaki. Are, I think they're possibly one <clears> of <throat> the um, doorways or the gateways that a lot of people use. I mean, I've got. 
I've got a shelf full of Anunnaki books, <laughs> people <laughs> writing about the Anunnaki, all sorts of things mm. um, on, on, on my bookshelf there, most of which, if I'm absolutely honest, I felt I, I've not found useful at all um, mm. because because they're very earthbound. Uh, yeah. say it, it only really starts to make sense when you, you get yourself off the planet. Mm -hmm. um, but they're where our histories start. I mean, I... I our, 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 the history that we've been given really begins um, going back about five, six thousand years ago with the mm. beginning of the Sumerian um, civilization, which just kind of like seemed to pop up out of nowhere, fully formed. You know, mm. you're, not, you're not meant to ask, <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what, one minute we're using Stone Age tools, the next we've got these, uh, you know, these amazing buildings and very, very sophisticated uh, societies and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut, mm. shut down your questioning mind. Um, yeah. So, but but that really is the beginning of what the Anunnaki uh have allowed us uh, as, as a history uh, and it mm. starts I mean our, our history on the history of um the galactic human or the angelic human goes back way 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 beyond that I mean we are in the third seeding of humanity on this planet so the last 5,000 years is just a quick blink but we've been so shut down and so corralled um, by the intruder races on this planet, of which the Anunnaki are just one. Mm, mm. Um, it's important to realize <clears throat> that, you know, they're, they're the ones, uh, they're the ones who have been, um, shall we say, they've, they've got, um, maybe the best way of saying it is they've, they're, they're, they're the major uh, actors on the stage, but there's an awful lot that goes on behind in order to put put this production mm. on and there's a you know other races who mm. I'm honest I think are far more threatening than the Anunnaki are mm -hmm. uh, the Anunnaki are, are, they're, they're, they're very good at optics they're very good at stories they're very good at, at 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 twisting the way you see things so they're very good front men in, in a way and they've given <laughs> us this very potted history of who we are um mm you know sort of and, and they're the ones that have told us that we've come from apes and you know that, that if you look at the Sumerian chronicles um they basically created us um from apes so modern man is is a construct of the Anunnaki and we are the, uh, they are our gods and so on and so forth and uh, they've given mm. us history they've given us civilization yak 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 you know yeah yeah um it's just a wonderful story to control us and make us subservient to them and and mm -hmm. and so on and so forth because mm -hmm. as i said we are in the third seeding of humanity on this planet between them and the draco in particular two previous seedings going back hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years have been wiped out and they've done enormous damage to the planet. They've done enormous damage to our DNA. We have what's called um, angelic um, DNA or diamond sun DNA, which is a 12 strand mm -hmm. DNA. And we've been reduced through what they have done to us to two strand DNA. Mm. The rest of it, you know, 97% of our DNA, a scientist will tell you is junk DNA. No, it's not. That's our divinity. That's mm. who we really are. That has all been shut down. <clears throat> that that you know, so many of us now are back on the planet, trying to 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 open up again and trying to reactivate and heal and 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 you know bring bring us all back to the divine humans that that we're meant to be, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, can... that's that's the real story, and you know, the story that that this very diminished story that the Anunnaki give us. Um, mm. is is designed to keep us in a box. Mm. Oh, absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. And I find it really interesting, even with the the kind of storylines of the two the two strand DNA going up to the twelve. Um, what I've found is lately more 
well, whenever I've kind of worked with people as well, there, there's an always an opening of the higher strands of DNA that's yeah. that's continual. And I feel as well, once you've kind of got that multidimensional awareness, you've really opened quite a lot of that fifth strand. Yeah. So when you're kind of accessing and opening that fifth strand of DNA, you've then got access to the the kind of multidimensionality of yourself, all of your memories. And then this allows the opening and the building of the higher strands yeah. of DNA. So I think with it, I, w I don't know whether it's a two strand DNA that was with originally on on within these forms I feel like it might be a three but I think it kind of changes and varies between them would you say yeah uh, between the, Anunnaki, the people the, the Anunnaki produced various <laughs> iterations you, you yeah know, started off um they they, they started off with basically a, a worker ape so they mm. genetically engineered um something to do the heavy work the heavy lifting mm, mining mm -hmm. the gold and things like this this that they wanted from the planet mm. um, they then decided they wanted um you know sort of house slaves effectively so they engineered something that was a little more civilized and then they engineered something that was you, you know more mm. intelligent again so that there, there are mm. strands there, there are strands of humanity that that, that carry uh, all of this mm. within it. Um, mm -hmm. There are other elements of humanity that have maintained uh, a, a higher levels uh, at some, mm. you, you in, in some respects of, of the original human DNA. But you know they've become so mashed together over the thousands of years that I mean re we we really are all in the same boat of 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 trying to. Um, claim back mm -hmm. our heritage really uh, yeah and, and our rightful place within you know our ga galactic families because we've been utterly cut off from that and that's only about five five thousand years old when you the Anunnaki mm. started telling us these stories I mean there was a massive mind wipe that happened they got control of most of the planetary consciousness grids and mm. you know, our consciousness and the planetary consciousness grids uh, you know we we have memory within our DNA, but there's also memory, collective race memory that we read out of the consciousness grids. And when they shut our DNA down to the degree it's been shut down, unplugged it to, to that degree, it took us out of the consciousness grids. But they also took control of those grids and started to run different timelines and different storylines also to back up uh, what they mm. were telling us through those grids. So... So we we kind of became separated from ourselves and separated from our, our understanding of ourselves as part of a galactic family. And that's mm. only going back about five, six thousand years. Mm. It's been so total that, you know, we've we've so many people now believe that, you, you know, they. They were a complete accident where two amoeba, you, you, you know, kind of like bumped together in a. In a, in a muddy puddle a long time ago yeah. <laughs> somehow miraculously hey presto here we are <laughs> <laughs> walking around and <laughs> no longer yeah, any, know, yeah yeah and, wow. and it, it, it's completely you know once you understand that that you are a divine being and that divine spark within you the sort of christos consciousness that that, mm -hmm. that is just there inside you waiting to be awakened it, you see yourself differently you respond to yourself differently mm. and you respond to the world around you differently so it, you know it, opening up that understanding within people awakening that understanding within people is so important to mm. uh, you know people coming back to themselves and coming back to like, the magnificence I mean that's it, it, not an exaggeration the true magnificence of who we really are Oh, absolutely. 100%. I completely yeah. agree with you there. And I think it's really interesting as well, from, from a healer's perspective, a lot of the time we've gone through like vast amounts of crap that we've led to believe, yeah. well, we've been led to believe that we are like less than what we actually are. Yeah. And because we've got all of these imprints of um, kind of low self-worth, we've got these imprints of trauma and, and things like that, that diminish the ability to access the light body or diminish the ability to get that perspective of the light body. It's very hard to kind of find that bridge back 
into into the truth yeah because we're having to kind of unravel all of these extra layers that are kind of fundamentally put on but when and this is something I always bring up within my own group talks or uh, my own sessions is the reminder of the divinity is the fundamental because that will initiate and build the sequence of um, source consciousness to awaken within yourself and you do host that body of, of source within you as well and that really kind of changes everything once you've got that perspective you're then able to kind of question okay so all of this self-worth would the god source aspect of myself really believe this is this true and yeah. then when you start to run a question sequence like that everything starts to shed off and you yeah. get you get your power back through through the gnosis of who you are yeah right because we have been very very deeply um programmed and conditioned mm. at that level you know we're told we're nasty you know we're warlike we're aggressive we're, mm -hmm. we can't live in peace <laughs> with this with that with that but you know when you pull back and I look around me at, at the human beings I know mm. most human beings are really decent honest straightforward people they want yeah. to live in peace with their neighbor doesn't matter what color your skin is or anything mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know they just want yeah. to get along and they want to get on with life and raise yeah. families and things like that mm. and then you've got this certain section who are the power hungry controlling dominating mm. you, know, you know low lives really and they're the ones who are telling us we're awful you know, and it's kind yeah. of, I, you know, <laughs> if, if if there is one fault with 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 us, I, I would say it's that we're so credulous. We we are very trusting. Mm. You know, and, and if you tell us we're we're nasty enough times, we'll we'll believe you because mm -hmm. we trust you, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. if anything, we we need to be a little. um yeah, a little more skeptical, a little more questioning about all of these mm. overlays and uh, and programs that are about who we re who we're told we are, mm -hmm. and come back again. I mean, every spiritual teacher says it. You know, come back inside mm. yourself, find that point mm. of divinity. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, one yeah, hundred percent. It's so so important to be able to kind of get that perspective and and kind of allow that to become the truth within so it can then translate to the truth without yeah and I think okay so I'm kind of being diverted here a little bit you mentioned um the we've gone through the Anunnaki and you've mentioned the um the discussion of uh other races Mm. No, I would really, I feel like we should go into those other races as well, because there was something that was really interesting that you brought up the other day, or yesterday, which was the Anunnaki holding the Luciferian consciousness, which I see as quite hedonistic, I see as kind of like, um, it, it's it's narcissistic, but is also hedonistic, but then we've got the Draco, which is more satanic, so yeah. it's interesting here because there is a difference, there is an absolute difference. There is, there is. Mm. As you said, it, it, it's it's the sort of reptilian, the the, the draconian um, reptilian side of things, mm. which is mainly satanic. And the, the the satanic side is more is the more bloodthirsty side. It's also um, it's the twisting of the father principle. Mm. Whereas uh, the Luciferian side, as you say, it's more hedonistic. Um, it isn't quite so steeped in in blood and bloodlust mm -hmm. uh, but it's the twisting of the mother principle into the dark mother mm -hmm. yeah yeah um i ultimately you know they are both very nasty uh, they both have very similar aims the two the two groups have very similar aims which is complete control and domination of angelic humanity um assimilation the wiping out of of, of the diamond sun dna Mm. um so yeah yeah basically choose your poison <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and it's also and, interesting and, you know the the the, oh. the the luciferian side also has a reptilian aspect to it the luciferian side is mainly anunnaki mm. the satanic side is mainly draco but mm. they both have 
reptilian genetics in them. Oh yeah, yeah, because of the crossbreeding and, and it, yeah. it's, it's worth it's worth understanding that because often people think it's only the draft code that are reptilian, but it's not. The reptilian mm. genetics also come in on the Anunnaki side. Yeah, absolutely, and I think also the third aspect to this of the the dark triad as well would be the Aramonic side as well, which I think we've touched base on for about a second a while ago. And I think I've been kind of looking more at this or it's been coming more and more into my awareness, which I feel like I should probably dig in a bit deeper because I don't really know enough about it. But the Arimonic side would be the deep materialism side of it. It's splitting the atom to find the God yeah, side yeah. of things. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm kind of like thinking about where does that fit into all of this as well? Well, I mean, you know, there's there's. I suppose you could say it's another strain of it's a a specialized strain of humanity that that they've um mm. uh they've produced uh, to be um their human controllers as it were mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah people I also, kind of yeah. call illuminati cabal all sorts of names like that but it, yeah it goes deeper than that it's this kind of we're the chosen ones mm. Mm -hmm. it, yeah yeah, because I it's interesting with the Aramonic one. I always feel with this is um, again it de definitely does go into the controller side of things, but it's the one that wants to be the creator as well. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's come through the whole Jehovah uh, Yahweh yeah. thing, and that right. and and that actually comes from uh, that that links into all of the Anunnaki stories. At some point, mm. it was really good to to just go through the Anunnaki stories and see mm. how they morphed into uh the biblical God because mm. with Yahweh yeah um, uh, equates to Enlil the what one of the Sumerian gods mm. and Enlil uh, and and uh, Yahweh is I mean there are three I, I often say to people and and you know I don't mean to offend anybody who's sort of deeply religious or anything in what I'm saying, I'm only talking to what I know and what I've found. Mm. So this is my truth. And if you really don't like it, I do apologize. But, <laughs> you know, you have your truth. I have mine sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, there are three gods in the Bible. There are the gods of Genesis, which are, are, are the Elohim. Mm -hmm. Elohim is plural. Um, then you come to... Yahweh Jehovah who is the most bloodthirsty god out I mean he's warlike he's aggressive he's inciting the Israelites to mass mm. genocide the entire time I mean he's a blood-soaked god mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the Christos of of the New Testament that um Yeshua uh was mm -hmm. was was trying to trying to bring through and and they're very different entities we we conflate them all into one entity then mm. they're very different entities absolutely uh, and and you know it, when you start to look at the bible and and think of the bible not so much as a sacred text but more as the history you start to see see that more clearly um and yeah i mean what you're talking about is 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 the yahweh Mm, the the Yahweh Yahweh aspect yeah mm, yeah it's crazy isn't it so many it, so many different interwoven things and I remember being at a kind of breathwork session not long ago and um it was a really good session and there was a lot of breathing involved as you can imagine <laughs> so, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> as the breathing kind of intensified he said the words uh, the breath in and the breath out is the breath of Yahweh. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. And then everything just dropped. I was like, no, not doing this. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and, and I, you know, I think it's, it's probably a really good point to, to just a word of caution here, you know, particularly within the new age, but it's been going on for thousands of years. Mm. We have been caught in, mm. uh, and most of the time it's the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are the tricksters. They're the ones who take our mm. sacred texts and corrupt them. Mm -hmm. So there's still a truth resonance within it, 
but there's a lot of lies as well and a lot of disinformation and sending you off in the wrong directions uh, and you know and they've uh, they've gone to town big time with the whole new age um scenarios so you know be careful what mm. you're talking to because you know, I, I think I said to you at the beginning, I kind of had to disassemble almost everything I thought I knew. That mm -hmm. included a lot of my sacred cows from years of, of of looking into wisdom teachings and mystery schools and, you know, all sorts of things like this. I, I just realized where I, I had been feeding my energy. Mm-hmm into things that were feeding the um negative alien agenda mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rather than um what you might call the the, the christos agenda just because mm -hmm. i you know I'd, I'd i'd fallen for these things as much as anybody else out there you know really good people with very good intent are, are, are mm -hmm. teaching incorrect stuff mm -hmm. and it it was a massive i mean there was a whole there was a period where I was almost in a state of post-traumatic st stress. It was like, you, you know, it, it's like everything in my life fell down, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. down and around my ears. And it was like, <laughs> well, what do I believe? Where is the firm ground? But when you mm. start to, and, and it builds from here, it builds from, from inside you, there is, mm. there is a resonance to truth. And once you train yourself, to 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 be able to tune into that you start to find your way through the maze and you start to be able to pick apart I, I see it like you know a great tangled ball of wool and this golden thread is is woven deeply woven into it but you've got to be able to to gradually carefully ex extract it and find mm. when you pick up a book what part of it's true and what part of it isn't and so on and so forth so mm -hmm. you know it is buyer beware i think we all need to, we all <clears throat> need to be wary and not just yeah. follow what what we're told when somebody says oh i'm you know i'm channeling whoever it might be well are they really or have they been I... have they been caught as their consciousness goes up the, mm. the consciousness of the channel goes up have they been caught in the lower dimensions of the fourth fourth dimensional field? By, yeah. There are so many false gods in that field. Mm. And, and they they sit there as archangels. They sit there as galactics and, and all sorts mm -hmm, of things mm -hmm. and feed. Often 80% correct information through, but it's the 20% you've got to be wary of. Because yeah they're distracting us or they're trying to build certain emotional fields that keep keep us enslaved and keep us feeding the fear machine basically mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's when it gets so so important to understand your your sovereignty within um yeah. when you are meditating when you are kind of um processing information or downloading information is to kind of remain in that kind of zero point neutrality field. So you're able to kind of just feed it through, look at it objectively and then filter what's right. And anything that keeps you in a state of kind of mental bondage or restriction or even control. Cause I know when I was kind of starting out, I used to find myself getting kind of caught up within um, the urges or the need to do certain things or kind of like I must complete this I must complete that but it's like oh, well, hold on a minute mm. if I was being given a task or asked to do something it definitely wouldn't be coming in as coercion it definitely wouldn't be forcing me to do something and I definitely the divine have such reverence for you when you are even here doing whatever it is you you are doing because it is such a bloody task being here at the best of times they wouldn't load your plate up yeah. and make you do something. It would be a soft, subtle suggestion. It's like, oh, okay. So you've got this thing you, you could be doing, but you could also do this. You could also do this. You'd be presented with different landscapes of information, which could show you the trajectory as to what's going to bring the most peace. Yeah. And even with that, you still don't have to take it. Yeah. And that's purely because being here is a job enough. 
it is it is and yeah. i think you know i think it's just worth reminding everybody i mean it just the fact that you chose to come here you chose to mm. engage with this density you chose to engage with the dramas that are going on here mm -hmm. my god respect you know yeah 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 absolutely i mean that you, you if you want to be special there it is yeah um right but so everything you, you yeah. know one of the things that i found so useful you know relating to what you were just saying there when i was kind of deep in the mire and there were times i really was on my knees as i was trying mm. to excavate myself out of out of the deep layers of conditioning and self-hate and things like that mm. that i was buried under um there's that phrase the gods never give you more than you can cope with and every time exactly. I was on my knees, I would remember that. And 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 it was like, well, somehow, somewhere within me, there's the strength to see this through. Mm -hmm. that, that would carry me forwards. Oh, and, and it's also, I mean, what you were saying about contraction as well, we need to understand, I mean, this physical body that we've been given is a miracle. I mean, it's it, people, mm. we, again, we've been taught, we've been conditioned mm. to ignore the body to treat it badly, to feed it complete crap, to, you, you know, to deprive it of sleep, to this, that, the other, to, to muck it up in any way we can, because it's like, it, it's like an exquisitely balanced and refined instrument mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the controller races want us to basically trash because then we can't use it the way it's meant to be mm -hmm. used. Yeah. But, you know, this, this, uh, this body will tell you if you tune into it and you listen to it it will tell you when things are wrong because mm -hmm. because if you learn to really feel the currents of energy and somebody is talking to you there's a resonance and an energy to it uh, and you can feel whether something in you contracts away from it in which case mm. there's something not quite right about it or whether something in you begins to expand and want to move towards what that person's saying or whatever it might be or mm. you know the task you've been given there's this kind of it's like an opening and a flowering mm -hmm. and and you have to listen you have to be really tuned into the body but it will give you if if you're not sure tune into your body mm. you see whether it's going into a place of contraction or or a place of expansion and and that will that will really help you to begin to find your way through through the maze mm. oh absolutely yeah even by ask, just training yourself with simple questions as well you can see okay. whether something is right or whether something's wrong yeah and you'll get it through as like a kind of feeling so say if you've got like uh a bunch of flowers in front of you and the flowers are pink you can say are these flowers yellow and then you just listen to your internal body, what your your guidance is, is it's gonna be kind of like winching back in. You're like, mm, no, yeah. that's gross, or that's that's not yeah. right. You will inherently feel it. And it will come with the same people like commentators on the internet, or when you pick up a book, you'll have bits of information where you'll kind of they'll pop out of the page and jump into your jump out of the page yeah. to your face or it will just kind of almost blur over. You just don't yeah. get focused in on that part. And that's where you're kind of gaining that level of um, intuitive reading yeah. on, on where you're kind of being pulled to. And the more you're kind of observant, work with your intention to kind of get there as well. Intention is probably the fastest tool for transformation uh, because yeah. you're directing your experience then. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, again, yeah. again, it's one that we're not taught we're deliberately mm. not taught to use it's very oh, very powerful mm. uh, you know and and the few people i know who who use focused intention and mm. well a magnificent manifestors <laughs> yeah oh absolutely yeah it's it's a very 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 useful tool um and whether that is just for like um, for learning whether it is for shaping your day however it may be it's as long as it's aligned to love then it's going to happen yeah, regardless yeah. so yeah sometimes it can take one or two tries to kind of get it right because it can be you get through one layer and then you have to go through another layer and then another layer for it to actually come in because the, you've got like a kind of lock system to unlock and kind of pull the pull the answers in that you're looking for or 
and pull the it's experience also, in. It's, if it's aligned with your highest good, because again, mm. it, it, you know, at the level of the personality, it's kind of like, well, I want a nice car, I want a nice house, I want, to, <laughs> you know, but that's that's not that's not necessarily mm. what you came here for, uh, and mm -hmm. it's also not necessarily aligned um, to who you really are. Yeah, um, what you came here to do. So, uh, yeah, um, again, it, it's it's kind of being able to discern what are your wants and what are your needs and mm. what is it that they want you to do, which may be very different to what you want to do or even what you think they want you to do. Yeah, uh, and this is yeah. like you know we were saying yesterday about about the grid session. You you, you just let go and let God. Mm. If you set up preconceptions, or we're going to do this, then we're going to go here, then then we're going to sort this out. It just doesn't and work that way. It doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> and and they they know. I mean, mm. I feel like I'm a I'm a a pawn on a chessboard. Uh, and and it, that may sound quite derogatory, but it's not, you know, we came down here, boots on the ground. We came down here to be of service. Mm -hmm. um, we are deep in the forest and can't see the wood for the trees, really. Mm -hmm. um, they have the higher picture of it. So they're saying, we need you here. We need you here. You, you know, come mm -hmm. and witness this whatever it might be and and our job is to move uh and to obey the nudge and the impulse when it comes mm -hmm. through um, yeah yeah just do do what needs to be done unlock what needs to be unlocked see what needs to be seen understand you you, you know what needs to meet the person that that we need to meet in order to say something to them that wakes them up or whatever it might be mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. and obey those nudges and those impulses and again you you know that comes back to tuning into this instrument we've been given <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah definitely and then being able to kind of process the ins and outs and where it's yeah, kind of going and get the ego out of the way mm, yeah. yeah and I think the more you kind of heal and process it kind of does step out of the way or it kind of moves in and out of the awareness and it's when you kind of process your own side of it behind the information that's when it can kind of fully step out and it, it does get to a point where you've got everything kind of running simultaneously at the same yeah. time yeah so and the ego becomes more stable yeah in the fact so it knows when danger is however it also knows that you're safe and yeah. then it allows the kind of super conscious the unconscious and the conscious to kind of yeah. sit together as three layers and then you've got the ego kind of here going yeah. here's what you've got to do <laughs> then you yeah. can make the choice from the it's different it, viewpoints it's important to understand the ego has a it has a function mm. um, yeah yeah you know there there are certain people who are it's like i'm you know i'm i'm getting rid of my ego on this that the other no you need your ego mm. it gives boundaries mm -hmm. uh, you know it gives some structure at, at, at this level here yeah but the but the ego shouldn't be the master no oh, oh god no, absolutely not always yeah. it be the servant and and it yeah. needs it, it needs to know its place yeah yeah definitely and and like i said with the healing that you do um and the ability to process information that's when it kind of is being trained to sit yeah. in that position where it's kind of sits on the shoulder passes you information of kind of like mm, yeah maybe this isn't so good yeah but that again always comes back to the resonance that you hold internally yeah to be the guidance as to whether it's right or wrong whether it's the alignment that you should be following and then you've got the information from the super conscious coming down and what does it mean up here the subconscious what is your response and what's your interaction behind it and then the conscious mind where you can kind of make your decision through uh your own intuitive guidance yeah so yeah that's yeah Oh, Interesting. <laughs> We're trotting through a few, a few topics, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's fascinating as well. I didn't expect it to go down this. I I never do. I always say this every time we sit down. It's like, oh, I didn't expect it to go there, but maybe I should expect it to go there by now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So you've got a really amazing website that I use frequently. 
Um, and I'd love maybe if I just give you the power to share the screen, yeah. you can it's, just talk it, through. It's not yeah, it's it's not long come online, and I'm I have to say I'm thrilled with it. The lady who's done it for me has uh, done a super job of it. It's mm. a website I've been wanting for years and haven't been able to find someone to put together for me, and then it literally in the last few months is just suddenly unpacked. It's like Yay. time is now the right time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, and it's it's come together so quickly. I can't believe it. Mm. Um, but it, it's a res uh, you know the the website. I want it to be a resource as much as anything. Um, and there's an a, a part of it, um, uh, called the Lost Wisdom Library, which is where I, I mean I I I I I'm always writing stuff down. Mm. Um, you know I I spent many years working in the holistic health field and I was always writing information down for people to check is information knowledge is power and it, it, you know there's a lot of truth in that we've mm -hmm. been given incorrect understandings of who we are we've been given incorrect understandings of our history incorrect understandings about how our bodies mm. work and things like this and once you start to change the you, you know the angle from which you're looking at things from which you're understanding things once you start to update your concepts um then all of a sudden a lot of stuff unpacks uh, and i'm always putting information in front of people in the hope that it, mm -hmm. you know, it triggers something in, in them for that that process to happen so Basically, the aim of the Lost Wisdom Library aspect of the website is is to just make it a, a go to resource for as much information as I can get out my head as time allows. Basically, yeah. Should we get it up on the screen? Yeah, yeah, go. For yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think for me this has been incredibly useful because whenever I work, like I mentioned earlier, I get. A lot of information coming in but sometimes it doesn't always link together so then i can pick up the phone and be like syra i've got this 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 and this and you're like okay go here so i literally do that um right how do i get in there do i go in this one no so further up further up enter lost wisdom library oh you you need to sign in have you okay members I think it's this one. Yeah, there we, we go. go. Yeah, that's it. So this is. Yeah. I, I mean, I there, there there is a sign into this. This sits behind. Um, this sits behind a paywall. Um, mm. Partly because uh, the ability for it to be um, censored is harder mm. when it's behind a paywall, and partly because. I have bills to pay. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. absolutely. Yeah, girls, to girls got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I have spent, I have spent several years, uh, really, uh, you know, diving so so deep, in order to be able to to find this information, share and and share mm. it. Um. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm more than happy to share it, and I will share it. I, a lot of stuff I will give out. Um, where where it's needed, but I also do need to earn a living. I'm afraid. Mm, and that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. it is is as it is, really. So yeah. whenever I kind of get stuck and I need to see something objectively or understand something objectively with a kind of timeline behind it, this has always been kind of perfect because I've got the information there in front of me that translates directly to what I've just seen in the field when I'm struggling to find the words to put it together. So for me even as i kind of i'm processing my own stuff i'll get quite a big chunk of it myself and then this would be the mirrored reflection back um for me to understand it basically so it's kind of somebody else reflecting back to me what i already know and i think also if it was if i didn't have the capability of channeling it would also give me a detailed narrative as to how to kind of see where I came from or understand what our history is somewhat you know so it is it's it's been an incredibly useful tool just yeah. to understand a bit of the history behind these myself are, or, these are what yeah. I call information sheets and the information sheets when I'm ready to write an information sheet I mean I have I have you know project books uh, 
stuffed full of notes um, mm. from that I've gathered from all over the place, from memories that have come up in me, from uh, you know paragraphs I've read somewhere, you know bits of information that have dropped in, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's pull, pulling them all together. And when I'm able to write an information sheet and finish it, I know I've pulled in as much as I'm going to get, at least for the time being. Mm. I do update from time to time. I come back to some of them and update because there's another layer. I'm I'm finding, I don't know if you're finding this, I'm finding as I, as I penetrate deeper into the interdimensional layers, my ability to sort of go deeper into the sixth dimension, the seventh dimension, and so on, mm-hmm. I, I, a whole nother layer or another perspective or understanding of, of something is opening up to me. Mm. Make me come back and maybe update something like this. But, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And I think it's really interesting as well. Since the the kind of permanent seed atom opened and the monadic fields became looped in, I think it was around October last year is when they started to come online a lot more strongly. Then through to January, February. Yeah, everything really blew blew off the handle, really, and yeah. the so access to information. Memory. Yeah, it's mm, gone whole new. Level. It went in. Oh my god, yeah, it, it's gone into overdrive. So you can pull in whole monads or blueprints of information and just kind of unravel it, but understand it there and then as oh. well. So it's become easier to join the links between the stories and follow a narrative as to where everything's kind of going into. So yeah, yeah I mean, it's been so so. It's a lot more amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. It's really my, my, so great. My big problem now is just the time to do all of this. Mm. Um, there is so much to share, and and I've I've made a start on it, but uh, I, I'm a long way off doing it. And also, I mean, the information sheets are are dealing with things in topics. There's mm-hmm. a whole narrative thread as well. I mean, there is a story that needs to be told. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, and at some point I'll get around to doing that. That's one of the one of the books that, mm. that um, I want to write because I think you know a lot of people don't want the detail, don't need the detail, um, but but to have the overview, the narrative thread of the whole overview is is um, important. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely. Like us yeah. Understanding our history, uh, you know, we uh, and. I keep kind of mentioning the word history. It is important, you know, how do we know where we're mm-hmm. going if we don't know where we've come from? If we've been mm-hmm. told lies about where we've come from, it, mm-hmm. it sets our expectations and our understanding of our potential. It it, it totally sets it in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. important that we have this firm foundation of who we are and where we've come from to kind of set our set our sail correctly for going forwards as it were mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh absolutely yeah 100 yeah. percent. now I'm, this I'm, one I'm, I'm a bit i'm a bit rabid when it comes to that it's so important. <laughs> <laughs> no no it's true absolutely because if yeah. yeah you do need to have that history there so you can kind of build a foundation yeah. as to where to go Good. forward so i'm straight yeah. into it. it's extra galactic <laughs> I know this is the part that I'm waiting for. And I find it interesting, this race, the Borgia, yeah. how similar it is to the, not the Di Medici line, but there is a house of Borgia. Uh, there which is, is one and of you've the... also got the Borg from the, um, from Star Trek. Star yeah. Trek, Star Trek, wasn't it? We yeah, are, yeah, 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 yeah the Borgia. Mm. Mm, yeah, I yeah. want to I want to see these ones coming up very soon. I think that'll yeah, be really okay. interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so you've. I, I need, I need of... to go away and spend some time on <laughs> island. <right? laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, island work would all, always be really good to to get this yeah. job done. Mm. Um, so you've got two things. Uh, you've got the life alchemy, and you've also got the Grail wisdom as well. Which one would you like to talk about first? Um, let's let's start at the Grail wisdom because really okay. the Grail wisdom leads into the life alchemy. These are these okay. are two programs um, that I'm going to be starting in the next in the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. The Grail wisdom is is really understanding um, the Grail. I talked last night a little bit a little bit about what what the Grail really is, but we we mm-hmm. are the Grail and the Christos consciousness and that that divine um being is is really the grail so it's bringing us back the you know the 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 the, the grail teachings and the grail 
um, information I, that, that, that I want to share is, is really, it's about our history, who we are, uh, and our understanding about how we can work with that uh, at mm. so many levels. So um, it, it's going to be online work, working through, um, you know, sort of Zoom meetings and stuff like that, sharing presentations, sharing information, questions and answers. And mm. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. It's I, 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 I need, you know, there is obviously a container, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to pin things down too much within that because I know how mm. I know how it goes. When certain information needs to be shared, they they will prompt me to do it. Mm. The next stage of that, which takes in all of this, but then puts an additional layer on top of it, is um, what I call life alchemy, and that where is that that is where it, it comes much more into a personal level. So. Mm -hmm you know the if you sign up for the life alchemy p uh, uh, program you'll get everything that's in in the grail wisdom mm -hmm. you'll get access to the lost wisdom library that comes as as part and parcel of it but then we also start to look more into how we alchemize ourselves back into the mm -hmm. divine being that we are at a more personal level mm -hmm. um so you know a lot these are for the people who want to fast track their progress, their spiritual progress and their spiritual mm -hmm. trans transformation, really. Mm -hmm. And then there is another level. And I, you know, I am prepared to work one to one with a few people. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I'm calling the guardian mentorship. But that will only be for a small group. I won't have the time to do that for more than a handful of people at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I just... Well, I mean, you know, as well as I do, it's about sharing. It's about helping others. It's, it's such mm. seeing seeing people find that inner light within themselves and begin to strengthen it and really begin to shine, you know, like, like the beacons mm. of what they are. There's, oh, absolutely. There's nothing better, is there? Nothing better. Nothing better at all. And I yeah. also found your books is also incredibly helpful. You sent me a couple of your books. Um, so I've got the Universal Laws one here, um, and I actually was reading it before the Polarity Integration Group Healing that we did the other day. I was just kind of guided to flick my eyes across it, and I found it incredibly helpful. As we mentioned earlier, information popping out of the pages that kind of needed to be highlighted within the session as well. It was just kind of tying together, I would say not tying together loose ends, but it was kind of wrapping the session in a nice bow and kind of drawing it together with kind of insightful information and tips as well it's just brilliant yeah so i think you can get these these books on amazon as well but there's also i see that yeah. there's a kind of page on your website as well yeah so, i mean yeah. It, it takes you to amazon it's um yeah most of them are available as kindle i've still got i mean the latest one the awakening your grail wisdom that, mm -hmm. that's not been out long I've still got to get that up as a Kindle that's on my jobs list basically but it will be available as a Kindle yeah and that, and that this one is really just it's talking about all of the different ways energy shows up in our environment yeah um, oh it's been brilliant this one I'm uh, going to be uh, reading this one on my way yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely oh well that's been lovely having you on I've really enjoyed it and uh, we'll look that's forward to talking to you. Feelings, you know, I mean, <laughs> the time goes so fast. I can't believe that's it. That's does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it does, yeah. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much for coming online, and it's My been pleasure. lovely chatting with you today. It was lovely working with you last night as well, and uh, sharing the grid work experience. It's just been marvelous. <laughs> yeah, it has. You know, and I have to say, folks, I, I'm I'm just loving working with Felix at, at every single level. It's been. <laughs> he is such a gift such a gift to us all and uh, having someone that I can talk to about all of this stuff I'm like a kid in a sweetie shop <laughs> yeah you and me both <laughs> oh, <whoopee. laughs> yeah absolutely no I'm I'm completely in the same boat there it's such a gift it's 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 just magic it really is and um you'll find this within your own uh soul family when you kind of come into connection with them the resonance is there and the fast paced energy of information that passes through that just opens everything up rapidly. 
yeah. to kind of bring in what's needed within your kind of contractual obligations, within your kind of uh, joy of uh, sharing the same information. It just expands so quickly. It is, it's yeah. just magic, it really is. But yeah, thank you again so much for coming on. It's been, it's been lovely today. A pleasure. Thank you. Oh, okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.